Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends. It's Halloween week and I figured it would be a good time to do a makeup and murder. And the request that I got quite a bit over the last couple of uh, makeup and murders has been to talk about Albert Fish. And it's actually quite fitting coming into Halloween week because he had a, a number of names attached to him, including uh, the Maniac of the Moon, the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Vampire of Brooklyn, the Boogeyman, and the Grey Man. So, um, today's video is it's all about him and his crimes. I try not to go into a huge amount of detail because he was a particularly sadistic killer and he targeted children. Um, it's, it's difficult to talk about. I don't, I don't really enjoy it if I'm 100% honest, um, but I, I again have to say like viewer discretion is advised, which makes me sound like, I don't know, like I'm a TV advert, but I'm, I mean it, like my videos are not meant for kids anyways, but this one especially is not, like do not let kids watch this. It's talking about Albert Fish and the things that he did, it's really truly disturbing um but if you want to hear about me talking about albert fish and see how i created this particular makeup look and just generally have a chatty get ready with me then this is the video for you do please keep on watching so i'm using the uh lois cosmetics gone rogue palette i'm not really going to talk through what it is that i'm using because it's all about the murder today i hope you have your tea ready I have mine. I feel like we're sufficiently zoomed in. Um, so let's get started. Um, Albert Fish, he is, I was going to say a strange fish, which does actually kind of work in this particular context. Um, but, oh, the crimes that he committed are, are pretty horrific. So he's one of those classic cases of you know, was it down to nature or was it down to nurture? Like, was it down to the experiences that he had in his life that made him the way that he is? Um, so he was born in 1870. Yes, I know, very, very long time ago. I, I, I kind of assume that anybody watching was not born then. If you were, my Lord, you're doing well. I hope you're looking well for your age. But he was uh, one of was it six kids uh, born to his parents? His father was 43 years older than his mother, uh, which, you know, is a, a little bit insane. Like, how how is that going to work out, like, long term in terms of, like, caring for kids and making sure that they're, um, you know, provided for? Um, and uh, well, it didn't turn out that great uh, as it as it transpired, um, because when Albert was five years old, his father died. Now, um, bear in mind that at the time, women were not given a hell of a lot of rights, and they also weren't really um, allowed to work at the time unless they were slaves. In which case, that is not working. That is horrific. Um, so he was put into an orphanage, St. John's. Now, let's just go into the general uh, family history here, okay? So, okay, here are some biological variables. Um, we know that based upon research, if the paternal age is higher, uh, when conceiving, there is a greater likelihood of psychological disorders such as schizophrenia. And obviously, uh, when um, Albert Fish's father was, uh, or when Albert Fish was born, his father was 75, that does indicate that maybe, you know, his paternal age was not great and left him at a greater likelihood of those particular disorders. Now, if we look at things like his mother, um, his mother was described as queer, not the LGBTQ uh, version of queer, but queer as in odd. And there were a lot of talks about her 
having delusions, um, a lot of religious delusions, and her own brother also had a lot of religious delusions. So that does kind of, again, kind of let us think that maybe there was a certain amount of uh, schizophrenia within the family. Uh, what am I going to do next? Yes, so I used nonconformist. I'm going to go into underdog here. That's important to think of because again we're we're thinking about things like um the the biological predisposition towards these things. That's what I, I think is interesting. His um brother was also seen as being like Albert Fish's own brother was also seen as being uh, mentally deficient, as was his sister. Um so huge uh, and he had an aunt as well that was actually termed crazy, like actually legitimately termed crazy. Now he wasn't actually born Albert. That's, that wasn't his name. His name was actually Hamilton, uh, but it was later changed. And weirdly, he changed it to Albert. I say weirdly because that was the name of his older brother who died. Is that not weird to like give your kid's name away to another one of your kids after they've died? That's a bit weird. Like, I lost my brother and I didn't take on his name. Partly because, like, I'm a girl, so, you know, it would be a bit weird to be going around and calling myself John, but there you go. Anyways, um, at the time, um, Albert's, or rather Hamilton's mother, he didn't realise Hamilton was going to be such a cool name and, you know, that the musical would take off. But I suppose, you know, it was a couple of hundred, well, not a couple of hundred, but about a hundred years too early. Um, but, yeah, his mother, obviously, she couldn't financially cope once Albert's father uh, passed away due to old age because you know he was old so she put them into an orphanage called St John's and it's there that essentially we see that his history with sadomasochism really starts to take off so he was the victim of a huge amount of bullying part of why he wanted to change his name was be called um because the kids called him ham and eggs which was a really unimaginative play on the name hamilton which is why he ultimately changed his name i think a bit foolish but i mean to each their own um i'm just gonna put a bit of this here i don't know what i'm doing uh you guys have seen the intro so hopefully this all comes together a bit better <laughs> I mean, it's a good palette, so, you know, I don't have to worry too much. Anyways, um, he was bullied quite a bit. Um, that, now, that's not to say that, um, you know, people who have been bullied are more likely to um, engage in criminal activities. Like, they're not. That's not an excuse. But this definitely is where the sadomasochism started um, because he would get beaten up by the other kids in St. John's and he would actually then get erections. This is not going to be a monetized video, guys. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so, of course, that only made things worse. Um, now, years and years and years ago, we used to have the triad of, um, not impairments, but... Sorry, I just heard, like like dripping of water from my shower and I was like what's that no it's just it's a weird shower anyways we used to have the triad of impair well not impairments but um uh, psychological man manifestations that would make it more likely that a person would um become a serial killer uh now that has been debunked but one of the things is of course you know fire starting the other is um uh torturing animals and the third is bedwetting now again there is no link but he actually when he was in the orphanage uh used to bedwet and he actually himself said that that's where his whole um sorry history with how he became the way he was started so you know kind of makes sense that we're we're talking about this here so whenever they would beat him up and it wasn't just the kids it was the staff as well I'm using a lowest cosmetics brush because you know that makes sense he he would get an erection and he actually started to out and out like crave it so again this is this is where all of that started um and when he was in the home actually i mean it was it was a place where there was a lot of 
I hope that I say this nicely, individuals with very clear issues. Um, because one of the uh, instances that he was exposed to early on was some of the boys from the orphanage captured a horse. God, I hate this, right? And they 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 doused the horse's tail in gasoline. Sorry, I, I actually I, oh uh, talking about Albert Fish and the stuff that went on his in his life is just so luck. Um but they doused the horse's tail in gasoline and set it on fire. And they thought this was hilarious, because you know. Anyways. This had a physiological impact on uh, Albert Fish at the time um, and he became aroused and this is, it, it kind of played into later because he used to, years and years later, take cotton balls and soak them in gasoline and insert them and try to set them alight to himself, to himself. He was a very, very screwed up individual. But you can kind of see some of the things that he was exposed to early on really had an impact upon his overall psychological development. And he was there for quite a period of time until his mother could get onto her feet again. Um, she eventually was able to take the kids back and he went back to, to living with his mother. But at that point, he had been exposed to so much that you would kind of wonder, had the damage already essentially been done? Um, um, he then at the age of 12, I mean, it's like so much happens in his life. It's so weird. At the age of 12, he meets another boy who I believe was like um who worked with telegraphs or something um like he was a telegram conductor or something like that and they formed a romantic relationship and you think to yourself oh young love that's so sweet mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. because it was there that they started uh, to engage in again a lot of sadomasochism they engaged in, in urophilia which is the ingestion of each other's urine I've never loved anyone enough to do that, and I will never love anyone enough to do that. Like, I'm just saying. It's a weird thing to put on your dating profile. Um, but they also engaged in coprophagia, which is oh, the ingestion of each other's faecal matter. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing. I've come across that myself in applied practice, but that's usually like with individuals with like developmental disorders um, and they don't really understand what it is that they're doing, but they were obviously cognitively enough aware to understand what it was that they were doing. Just looking for a brush to kind of floof this out a little. Yes, you're, you are a thing now. You're happening. Hmm, pip pip. Weird video as per usual. Um, so yeah, he was exposed to all of this. Again, he never had like a normal trajectory of development and his mum seemed to be quite hands off. Like she had her own sort of issues to deal with. Um, eventually though, he ended up getting married. When he was 28, his mother arranged for him to be married to uh, a 19 year old woman and they had six kids together. Um, and apparently he was a good dad, like in the sense that, well, as good as a serial killer can be as a dad, like he didn't harm the kids. He would actually try and get them to harm him because, you know, he would get off on it. He would, he had this like piece of timber that had nails and stuff that he would use for like self-flagellation. And he would get down on all fours and he would get the kids to hold up fingers and he had to guess how many fingers they were holding up while he had his back to them. And if he guessed wrong, they then beat him. That was the game, which weird, weird, weird thing to do. Let's let's be real. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that you guys are all agreeing with me. If not, this is not the correct video for you. I probably am not the sort of person that you want to watch. Um, but... When he was married to this particular woman, he still was engaging um, with other people. So in particular, he um, had a relationship with a man and they went to 
um, like a wax museum together and it was there that he saw some questionable material including a figurine of like a dissected penis and it was there that he became absolutely obsessed with the idea of that and that's where one of his first really major crimes uh, originated um, and a lot of this happened while he was married to his first wife he had two wives the second uh, wife it only lasted I think it was a month or a week or something like that it was very very short-lived just building up a little bit more color there because you know why not I can do what I want this is my channel I can do as I like um but when he was younger and he was in the orphanage he used to watch other boys getting changed so there was instances essentially of him starting off as a paedophile and he was a paedophile because pretty much all of his victims were kids and it is just uh, like I said it's just uh, like I'm I'm almost stalling to get into the actual crimes because it makes me feel so sick to my stomach he would oh tea tea is needed yeah um I might yeah I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> That's per usual, and I feel panicked about talking about this particular subject. Why have I done this to myself? I don't know. I don't know. So, anyways, um, he basically went on and was brutalizing children, sexually assaulting them, uh, but he hadn't committed any murders, which I guess, you know good for him just a standard paedophile at that point being gross and disgusting he figured out that he could target certain populations without much um rebuke so the populations he was going for were um people who were black because they were seen as being on the fringes of society and the terrible thing is he was right because people just didn't care if a kid who was black disappeared nobody batted an eyelid bar obviously their family in that community so I mean this often happens with serial killers they go for disenfranchised communities this is why like if we look at indigenous populations um indigenous women are more likely to be murdered than say a Caucasian woman because they're so disenfranchised so he went for black kids he also went for uh, kids who had uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities and like I said initially he started off and it was just I mean how do I say this like plain old um, sexual abuse um, but eventually he entered into um, oh that's pretty this pleases me he eventually entered into a um, sadomasochistic relationship with um, a young man uh, called was it Thomas Kinnett? Can't even remember. It's very, I'm really bad with names. But he was 19 years old, and um, frankly, um, it was pretty clear that he had a developmental and intellectual disability. And Albert 100% took advantage of that. And they began to engage in a lot of, you know, questionable activity because, you know, that's what um, that's what Albert was into. And eventually he lured uh, Thomas away with the intention of actually killing him. And um, what actually stopped him, he kept him in like a cabin in the woods for several days. What actually stopped him was it was the summer. And he realized if he killed him during the summer, um, <laughs> the body would smell and he would be detected. So there was a certain amount of like understanding and foresight of like what he was doing was wrong and he didn't want to get caught. So it does kind of make you think how much of that is actual madness. Now, by the way, when he was 12, when he was climbing a cherry tree and he fell and he suffered a concussion. So there is a question there as to whether or not some of his actions are down to neurological damage. For instance, if he had um, actually damaged his um, frontal cortex, which is responsible for uh, planning and decision-making, 
that could actually be the thing that is responsible for a whole chunk of his actions. Not that I am in any way excusing it. What he did was gross, but that could be one of the one of the things involved there. Uh, I'm now taking Lois Cosmetics like liquid metal shadows in Queensguard, which is this beautiful pink. Anyways, he held him there for several days and tortured him because that's what Albert Fish was into. He was a, a sadist, but also a masochist, which is an interesting mix. Usually you don't find a sadist who is also a masochist. Um, incidentally, he used to actually like hire prostitutes of both sexes to beat him. And he wouldn't even look for sexual gratification. Like that wasn't part of the thing. Like he wasn't looking for them to service him in that way. He was looking for them to beat him because that's how he got off. Sorry, I'm on so many different tangents because this whole thing creeps me out so much. It's such a ugh, story. Um, this is pretty though. So this, this makes me feel a smidgen better. Oh, look at you, so pretty. Anyways, let's let's get back into it because I'm feeling more and more uncomfortable the more I'm thinking about it and I'm like, oh, just rip off the band-aid, Teresa, just do it. Yeah, that'll do. Um, so, oh, he held this poor, intellectually disabled boy for several days, eventually decided he would let him go, but not before, oh, oh God, <laughs> not before he severed his penis. And he kept, he kept part of it. He then wrapped him in Vaseline covered bandages. Yeah, Vaseline, don't you love that you were associated with this case? Gave him $10 for his trouble and kissed him goodbye. Now, I don't know whatever happened to this particular individual. Um, I hope he went on to survive and, and live an okay life but um there's no kind of information on the records on that but that was his first attempt at a kill but due to various you know uh, environmental reasons he did not but he said that he would always remember the screams of thomas and that's part of what egged him on he was trying to essentially relive the thrill of that and again it comes back to that very early thing of him going to that wax museum and seeing the dissected penis which can i just say he can't blame that as being a thing there are plenty i've been to the surgical museum in in edinburgh and i haven't cut anybody open like i find it fascinating but uh, like as in i find anatomy fascinating but i've never done that so that being his excuse is pretty pretty poor you know um but yeah it's oh he's he's a he's a whole thing um he has three confirmed kills, but there is a suggestion that he has far more than that. Um, because at one point he said that he had a kill in every county and state, which that could be up to like a hundred. Um, and again, he made sure he went for disenfranchised kids. Um, so he had several names. Um, one of which, well, actually, let's go through all of them. There was the Werewolf of Wisteria, uh, the Vampire of Brooklyn, uh, the Boogeyman, uh, the Moon Maniac, and the Grey Man. And each of these have a sort of an origin. And it, mm, it's just, it's so ugh, gross. I figured while I was off camera, I would make myself useful and like put on my lashes and put a little bit of um, liner on the tight line there we go words are hard anyways um part of why we don't know how many kids he killed was um he would again like i said lure um black kids away and he would have other kids lure them he would pay kids to lure other kids to him and he would frankly butcher them um with what he called his implements of death so he had like hammers, saws, hacksaws. And part of why we we don't know exactly how many he killed was there weren't any remains to be found because he would eat them. It's so 
disturbing and he he primarily went for young kids like under the age of six that's kind of what he went for um that's probably why he didn't kill um one of his early attempted victims because he was 19 he wasn't quite within his desired bracket I suppose but it's just oh it's oh he's so creepy he's so creepy um but he got it in his head, obviously, that he wanted to kill. And um, he at one point saw this little girl in, I believe it was 1924, and her name was Beatrice Keel. And he saw her near her family's farm. Oh my God, I'm completely forgetting myself and having to do the rest of my makeup. And um, he saw her near her family's farm. And he attempted to kind of lure her away. And he said that he would pay her to help him pick rhubarb but his mother or her, or her mother saw uh, Albert Fish with this child and thankfully ran him away however Albert Fish is um, a dogged individual and if he wants something he'll come back so he actually came back the next night and slept in the barn where he was basically stalking his prey uh, but Beatrice's dad managed to run him away Thank the Lord. Now, where we got the name Werewolf of Wisteria was, you know, obviously him eating the bodies. It's utterly gross. But there are reasons for the rest of his um, name. So, for instance, Moon Maniac was because he was very into the eating of raw meat and he would often try and feed raw meat to his kids and his kids said that that would primarily happen around about the full moon. So, hence moon maniac um and it's interesting because there is some studies to show that um certain acts of violence are more likely around the full moon hell that's where we got the 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 name lunacy from was that acts of violence or madness were seen to be uh correlated with the lunar cycle um oh god anyways at one point one of the kids that he lured off was called billy gaffney um, he was only three years old and he was playing with another kid, um, also called uh, Billy. And he managed to lure him away. Oh God, I don't, oh, ugh, it's, it's, so, it's so gross. He's just awful. And um, they never found his body. And even towards the end, Billy Gaffney's mother was not sure if he had actually been murdered uh, by Albert Fish because there were no remains and I think she just wanted to remain in denial because what actually happened to him or so it appears from what Albert Fish said is utterly utterly disgusting like there's no other way to say it he was just a vile vile human being um he had lured he had lured Billy away um from the other child Billy um sorry I'm just like trying to conceal my spots because I'm so stressed out recently that I've just been breaking out to the point that even my boyfriend <laughs> I have a boyfriend it's a thing um has actually pointed it out and he's all stressed out about me being stressed out and it's really funny and I'm like oh god this is a weird cycle that we're in <laughs> anyways oh my god I'm so bad at keeping on topic with this one I think it's just because I work with kids so closely, I think this is like, because I, I was asked to do Albert Fish, not in that way, but you know what I mean. Um, and it, it just hits really close to home for me because I work with kids and I work with developmentally disabled kids. So it's, it is it is quite upsetting for me. Um, I'm just taking the It Cosmetics um, Your Skin But Better CC Plus Illumination um, and it's in the shade Fair because, you know, I'm a ghost. But he lured this poor child away and he tortured him. He left him in an isolated setting and um, he would come back and essentially flagellate him. He would whip him. He made his own cat of nine tails, or cat o' nine tails, whatever way you want to pronounce it. And um, he would come back and torture this poor child. Like, I mean, it was horrific. Um, he, when he was still alive, and this was a three-year-old child. God, I really hope that nobody is having kids watch this. Again, I, I, I will have said that in the intro of the love of God. 
Do not let kids watch this. This is not for them. This is not for them. He cut off his ears while he was still alive. He cut off his nose and he gouged his eyes. <sighs> Thankfully, poor Billy didn't survive past that. I say that because <sighs> Albert would have kept on going. He would have kept torturing him until poor Billy's little body would have given up. He then... um he then, oh, he cut open his stomach and drank the blood. So this is where we get the name Vampire of Brooklyn from. He decapitated him and he butchered the rest of him to bring back to his home to then eat. Now, we don't know if he fed the meat to his children. My Lord, I hope he didn't because that is just, that's a whole other element of Oh, grossness. Um, but this has been this. He said this in his confession later on to his attorney and uh, his attorney. Like, I mean, it was a gross, disgusting confession of exactly what happened now uh, that I gave you the cleaned down version because oh, it was it was gross. Uh, but Billy Gaffney's mother still was not sure towards the end if that was if he even killed her and uh, killed her child, but it's pretty clear he probably did. Um, it's just, ugh, it's just mm, horrific. So that's one of the kills that we're pretty darn certain he had, but we know that there were probably more. So like I said, he even himself said he went for disenfranchised kids, which again, <laughs> racism was working out for him pretty darn well at the time. Now, he made a little bit of a boo-boo, a little bit of a, a fundamental error um, because he then changed um, his general modus operandi, which was the, the sort of victim he would usually go for um, because he then um, targeted a young child called uh, Francis McDonnell, super Irish name. And uh, I, I like they must be Irish descent because actually his father was in the police force. Um, <laughs> this is it's not where this all went wrong for him, but this was where people started to get um, an idea of, of him at the time. Sorry, I'm, I'm so all over the place with this particular TED talk, if you will, because oh, it just makes me so uncomfortable. Um, let me just put a little bit of concealer. Conceal my sins, guys. Conceal my sins. Sort me out. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but Francis was seen heading off with a man, um, an old, an elderly gentleman, because I think at that point he was in his 50s. Um, and he was in grey. So this is where the, the um, name, the grey man, came from. And actually, Francis's own mother saw him like that, uh, saw Albert Fish. Not good enough to get a decent description of him, but, you know, enough that they had something to go on. Um, Francis's body was later found hanging from a tree and he had been strangled by his own, like, belt. <laughs> and it was, he was strangled so hard that the belt had basically merged with his skin. That is how bad it actually, like it was so horrifically severe. And this really confused the, the pathologist at the time because he was going on what the reports were saying, uh, which was that it seemed to have been an elderly gentleman and he was looking at this incredibly violent, aggressive crime. And he said, there's no way that somebody old could have done this because this required a huge amount of strength to actually accomplish. So that actually kind of confused matters further. Now, I totally like screwed up some of my under eye, but sure, look, whatever. It's just makeup. It all washes off. <sighs> Who knows what it is that I'm doing. Anyways, you can only imagine how devastating that was. And, uh, Francis's dad was um, a police officer, which is part of why I think they were definitely of Irish descent, because so many people of Irish descent in America uh, ended up in the police force. 
So he actually had nothing originally to do with homicides, but after his son's death, he basically went on the case and was like, I want to do something on this. I I want to track this particular man down. Now, nothing ever came of it, at least not at that point. And the, the case essentially ran cold. Um, at a similar point, I kind of talked about how about Albert Fish's implements of hell um, and how like all throughout all of this time he was sexually assaulting children and he was grooming them and doing all of this and uh, he was staying in like a block of flats and he used to have this kid Cyril Quinn over again very young child and um, Cyril used to come over for uh, dinner sometimes because he was being groomed and um, he was invited over at one point and he brought his friend and himself and his friend were in Albert Fish's bedroom and they were roughhousing and you know doing what young boys do and um, they slipped off the bed covers and it was then that they found um, Albert Fish's implements of hell and obviously they got that there was something really wrong about this and they hightailed it out of there just as well they could have been some of his victims but they never said anything about it uh, Thomas uh, Kinnead uh, who was one of his first well not his first victims but the early victim that we definitely know of um, as far as we know he didn't report anything but frankly even if he had reported anything, considering he had an intellectual disability, he probably wouldn't have been taken all that seriously. And these were also young kids, so again, they wouldn't have been taken all that seriously either. So it's just another issue of like the the time and, and the way that people were like being perceived, which just like bugs me beyond. Where did I put my Laura Mercier powder? Why is nothing going right for me? Come if you're here. I just couldn't say it. It was right in front of me. This is what happens when I don't have my glasses on. Um, yeah, it is oh, it's such a creepy, creepy story. Anyways, he was still going on and being gross. And thankfully, those kids got away. I mean, we don't even know how many kids had near misses. Um, oh, by the way, in the interim of all of this, like his wife, his first wife had left him. She went off with like a handyman called John Straub. <laughs> it's like she, she, I wonder, did she just know that he was like really weird? But she left the kids with him, which I find really interesting. Like, can you imagine leaving your kids with somebody like that? Terrifying. Um, I'm going to try and do my brows now. I don't really do much with my brows, but like this. Let's give it a go. Um, yeah, anyways, um, he was at this point, I think, 58. And uh, the trail had gone cold in terms of Francis McDonnell. So his father wasn't having much luck in trying to find him. Uh, but basically, Albert Fish was still going around and, and killing uh, kids because he's a horrible, horrible human being. And... Um, he saw an advertisement in the paper. Also, one of the things he used to do was um, he would like look at advertisements in the paper uh, that were written by women and he'd send them like horrific obscene letters, like inciting violence and all this sort of thing. Uh, it was never really reported, but it ended up being used um, against him in court later on. It's all, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's all it's all linked. Anyways, he saw um, an advertisement from a young man in, I think it was Brooklyn, saying that he was looking for work because his family were essentially destitute. And, well, Albert saw this and went, oh my God, this is the perfect opportunity. My prey is coming to me. So he telegrammed them and said, actually, you know, I'm I'm an elderly man. I need help around my farm. Spoiler alert, he does not have a farm. Um, so, you know, this would be great. And they said, well, you know, how about you come to our house and we can meet and we can chat, blah, 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 blah. So he arranged to meet them. He had given them an alias. I can't remember what it was, but it obviously he didn't give them the name Albert Fish. It was like Thomas Holland or something like that. Uh, although maybe I'm just thinking of Tom Holland, Spider-Man. He'd have nothing to do with that. He is a good, good boy. 
I love him so much. His uh, lip sync battle of of um, Singing in the Rain just genuinely makes me so happy. Like whenever I feel a bit sad, I just look at that and I'm like, yes, subverting gender norms. It's a whole thing. Anyways, he obviously had intended to kill this boy. Um, I say boy, he was 18, but let's, you know, face it, you know, still a boy. Um, but his plans changed when he arrived at the door and it was answered by little Grace Bud. Uh, it was then he was like, ah, no, everything's changed. This is what I'm doing instead. She is so more my kind of thing. Um, she was a 10 year old child. And he instantly was like, yeah, okay, let's let's change the plan on this. So, um, you know, she was a very affable child and very, um, you know, friendly. And she was like sitting on his knee, which he would later talk about. But we, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm attempting to make my, my nose look snatched. Like he snatched all the children. He's so freaking creepy. Um, but anyways, he kind of said, yeah, great. Um, you would be fantastic um, in terms of like working on my farm. That's brilliant. Oh, I completely forgot though. Uh, I can't go out to the farm right away because my niece has a birthday party and I have to go to that. So I'll come back and I'll pick up your son then. And it was as he was heading out the door, he did the, oh, actually, I've just had a thought. Yeah, you have, you creepy cretin. Oh, he's just a bad, bad man. Um, let's see. I have, a, I have a couple of things here that I kind of want to use. Um, or will I? No, I'll, I'll do the under eye. Oh, like he's just creepy, creepy cretin. So he said, oh, actually, you know, now that I think of it, my niece is pretty much the same age as Grace. So wouldn't it make sense if Grace comes with me because there'll be other kids there her age and she'll have a whale of a time. Now, this was a, a destitute family and um, like they had just seen him give um, give Grace a huge chunk of money because he had asked her uh, did she know how to count and she said she did so he handed her a massive wad of money like it was a huge amount of money at the time so he had just flashed a huge amount of cash in front of them and they were kind of thinking oh my god you know this is um this is amazing you know here's this man and you know he could be the solution to all of our financial problems so they were initially reluctant um, Grace's mum was kind of like oh no she's only 10 you know she really shouldn't be away from us at this point and um, it was Grace's dad that then said oh no look you know she's a young kid she she deserves to have a little bit of fun let her go out let her live her life let her enjoy herself which I, I can only imagine when he looked back he must have just felt horrific but but god bless him like he he obviously had no clue like this is a time where serial killers were not prevalent, you know, people didn't lock their doors, it just wasn't a thing, like, you, you didn't have that same horrific malevolence uh, in the same way that we do now, that same fear of other people, it's just, oh, it's so sad, well, I think it's sad anyways, so he said, yeah, sure, let her go, and um, anyways, they let her go, and they waited, and waited, waited and waited and waited because as far as they were concerned he was meant to be coming back obviously with their child and he would be taking their other child to the farm which sounds so malevolent really doesn't it when you when you think about it let me see what so will i use one of my new beauty bay liners on the on the water line I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Somebody help me. Uh, actually, Elena pointed out something in her review and I thought it was so spot on, which was, it's a pity that they don't have like the colours on the back to kind of t let you know what it is that you're using because I do think that's a bit, I don't want to say rubbish, but it's not exactly great. Uh, I'm using the shade Deep, which is from their metallic thing. I'm going to end up getting more of these because I really enjoy them. And you will go onto my eyelid. So they waited and waited and she never came back. So they became obviously deeply concerned about what was happening and um, they issued an alarm and they went to the police to say, 
this man has taken our daughter, they gave the name, and obviously no such man ever existed. Um, now, <sighs> yeah, it's just, uh, it's gross. Anyways, the trail ran cold on that. They had no idea exactly what it was that had happened to her. They just knew that she had gone. Um, so obviously their imaginations would have run riot as to what had could have possibly happened to their daughter. Um, unfortunately, um, or maybe fortunately, because it was a thing that actually ended up getting him caught in the end, he didn't leave that to their imagination. He was like, they need to know what it is that I did to their poor little child. And he decided to send a telegram. Now they had uh, brought, or they had kind of worked backwards in terms of the previous telegrams they had had, and they'd uh, searched it back to a, to a location, and they had the name, but not the correct name. So it never, it never divulged into anything. And simultaneously, what had actually happened uh, was that another man was arrested uh, for Grace Bud's murder. Because again, her body wasn't actually found. And I'll get to that in a little bit. I'm just going to brush this off and try and make this a thing. Do I look more snatched, Mama? No. No, you don't. You still look like a fool. But oh well. Oh well. Um, we'll, 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 we'll get there, hopefully. Probably not. Probably not. Um, oh, God. Anyways. And another man was actually arrested and convicted of her murder. And he served 108 days in prison. Now, that alone could have, like, totally uh, detracted from her killer ever coming to justice. I'm just using the Beauty Bay bronzer in fawn. I don't know what I'm doing. Somebody help me. I'm just going to smoosh it all over the place. Whatever, it's fine. Make me look like I'm not dead. That is what I'm hoping for. Um, so yeah, that could have really derailed things. And what actually happened there was that the man who was convicted, his wife framed him. There was like some sort of marital discord happening and she decided, yes, well, I will frame him for the murder of a 10 year old child, which who does that? Like who, <laughs> who does that? Like, it's so weird. Anyways, it probably would have come to nothing. He would have kept on killing. Um, oh, he was so, so creepy. Um, I mean, there are no words. But he decided, and this is just another manifestation of his sadism, because the only reason he would have sent on this telegram was to cause pain. Yes, it wasn't physical pain that he would usually cause to his victims, but this was emotional pain, which frankly must be so much worse. Um, he sent a telegram to Grace's mother. Can, can you even imagine if you're like, and I don't have kids, I work with kids. So like, you know, you just end up loving them. They're the best little weirdos. And I say that in, in all of, with all of the love that I can muster because kids are very, very, very odd. But the message that he sent was just horrific. He talked about, how he had lured her essentially to this particular place. I'm just going to attempt to make it look like I have a shadow under my chin. Or not under my chin, under my lip, so that we can pretend that I have bigger lips. I don't. There's crawling in there. They're non-existent. Have I tricked you yet? Does it look like I've... Mm, no. Oh well, it is what it is. But he sent on this telegram basically saying, um, I brought her to this um, house out in the middle of nowhere and I told her to go and pick flowers. And I went inside the house and um, I took off all of my clothes because I knew that I was going to kill her and I was gonna get blood all over myself and I didn't want my clothes to get ruined. What? What? <laughs> 
Anyways, he said that he saw her um, outside and he beckoned her in. And uh, anyways, she came up the stairs and immediately started to cry because she saw this naked 60 something year old man in front of her and she obviously realized something was not going quite right. Um, I'm just using the Beauty Bay blush in coral. Um, and she began to cry and he tried to um, overpower her. Now, bless that poor little child, but she really, she gave him a run for his money. She really, really fought as, as best she possibly could. She tore at him, she scratched at him. But at the end of the day, she was a 10 year old child. He went for kids, partly because he was a paedophile, but also because he would have power over them. And he just, in my mind, probably the worst killer that I've, I've talked about so far. Not that I've talked about a huge amount, but you know, there you go. He then went on to say in the letter what it was that he did to her and how he decapitated her and mutilated her body. But he then said, like, oh, don't worry, though, I didn't sexually assault her. So, you know, your daughter at least died a virgin. Thanks. That's, that's good to know. I guess that's something that you didn't, like, you brutalised the child, but at least you didn't do that. Ooh, so gross. So very, very gross. I'm taking the Beauty Bay um, highlighter in Flash. Really enjoying Beauty Bay. Uh, I'm almost done at this point. Um, which is good because we're near the end of the story. Thank the Lord, because uh, it's gross. Anyways, he then went on to say, you know, I cut her up and um, he, he, this is a direct quote from what he said to her mother, to her mother, um, how sweet her little ass did taste when it was roasted. He ate her and he talked about eating her and he then said that he lived off of her meat, because that's the phrase he used, she's a child, um, for nine days, for nine days, right? You can only imagine as a parent receiving a letter like that, your child has been missing, I think at that point it was like six years or something like that, and you get that. And he had had enough details in there to say like, this was the day that I came by, this was what I was wearing, I brought you guys this, like was it cheeses or something, sweet cheeses and this and that, and I said I was going to hear. So they knew it was definitely him and the handwriting matched previous telegrams. But he did that to totally torture them. But here's, here's the thing, the, the telegram was sent on um, specific paper that was essentially notated. And it had um, uh, basically a logo or, a, or an icon for the NYPCBA. So there's only a limited number of that. And they were able to trace it back uh, to a particular location. And they figured out that it was a, a guy that worked with this uh, particular organization. He stayed in this particular guest house. And they figured out that there was a man who lived there um, that would have had access to that, that man being Albert Fish. But of course, his name didn't match the name that they had on their records for the man who had uh, taken Little Grace. However, when they described um, this particular man to the woman who owned this boarding house, I'm going to take some more highlight because you can never have too much highlight. Um, she said, yeah, that's, that's him. Yeah, that's Albert. That, that's who, who you're looking for. And uh, he hadn't been there for a while. Uh, he would kind of dip in and dip out because he would go to his kids and stuff. Because he was still a family man at the end of the day. Ugh. But she said, yeah, I haven't seen him for a while. Um, and they, the police, by the way, uh, staked him out. And do you know what I find so satisfying? One of the police that was involved in his subsequent arrest was Francis McDonald's father. He had given up his line of work in the police and had moved over to homicide to follow that case, which is technically unethical. You shouldn't really be involved in a case that has something to do with your own family, but he did it. Anyways, they staked it out for two days and there was no sign of him. And eventually they couldn't obviously have all of the resources attributed towards that. So they kind of said, right, um, will you let us know if he comes back and she said well he will definitely come back because he comes back here to pick up his checks and uh, sure enough a couple of days later he came back and she contacted the police and said 
he's here now. Like he's here now. And they said, well, look, could you, could you hold on to him? Can you stall him? Just going to use whatever I have left this makeup spray. And fair play to her. She did. And <laughs> she did an excellent job. She gave him a drink and she sat him down and they chatted away. Can you imagine knowing that you have somebody who is a violent criminal in your close proximity and trying to keep them occupied and make sure that they don't go away? Unsung hero is all I'm saying. Um, anyways, uh, <sighs> eventually they they got to the boarding house and um they confronted him and he tried to turn a knife on them um but the arresting officer was able to wrestle it out of him and he then confessed to everything it was all pretty not anticlimactic but he admitted to it he didn't even try to hide that he did these particular things which is part of why you would think that maybe he wasn't like fully cognitively aware um obviously then the whole thing went to trial um he was he tried to plead the whole insanity thing and obviously he was not mentally uh very stable because actually even when he was in prison they did an x-ray and they found that one of the things that he used to do in his spare time for kicks was to insert needles in his own body in his undercarriage that's the way I'm going to say it don't demonetize me mm, I earned so little from this I haven't earned anything at all from YouTube yet but there you go um should I put on more bronzer so that I look a little bit more alive that's that's okay I can do that right nobody said no so I'm doing it I'm doing it oh my god why has nobody stopped me um so they, they they tried to plead insanity and uh, actually, like, they, they refused to find him insane. Not because they didn't believe that he was insane. The jury actually said, yeah, they thought he was mentally unwell. But you see, if he was mentally unstable, he wouldn't have gotten the death sentence. So they decided that he was declared sane so he could get the death sentence. He was put to death in Sing Sing prison at the age of 65. And the morning, I think it was at the morning of his execution or a few days before his execution, Billy Gaffney's mother turned up and basically was like, I want to know what happened to my kid. And he refused to talk to her and he actually even broke down. So she never got like a full idea what happened, but he did hand on a letter to his attorney to actually state what it was that happened. But the attorney would refuse to actually share a lot of that because he said it was just so vile and disgusting that he said that he didn't think that there would be any good that could possibly come out of sharing that piece of information which is like mind-blowing in and of itself um when he was brought in eventually to the uh, electric chair because that was the way that they killed people back in the day um he actually said he wasn't sure why he was there which I'm not sure if that was down to senility or if he legitimately was so um, mentally unstable that he didn't get that he had done something wrong. Um, so eventually he was put to death at the age of 65. And that is the tale of Albert Fish. I'm going to go and uh, put on some lipstick because you don't need to watch me doing that. And we'll just uh, finish it up and you can see my eyes because, you know, that's what we're here for. Remember guys, we're friends. Uh, I put on lipstick. Um, just just remember, my skin isn't great at the moment. Uh, this is the finished look. We've talked about Albert Fish. Let's think about nice things. So I'm gonna zoom you into the eye so you can have a little look. It's a very, very simple eye look. I'm gonna take off my glasses. I like it, very simple, didn't take a lot of time. I find that I don't have to do much blending with this particular eyeshadow palette. It's just that good. It's a bit sickening. So that was it. We talked about Albert Fish and let's face it, his super, super gross crimes. Um, pretty fitting considering it's Halloween week that we are talking about this particular man, but uh, there you go. Um, do please let me know if there's anybody else that you want me to um, look at. It does take me a little while because I, I try to um, look into bits and pieces and do a bit of research. I don't like to just sit down and just blah. I mean, I do, but I don't. Um, 
But that is it. Uh, do please like, comment and subscribe. Um, I have a very small channel and I don't get a lot of views because I'm odd. <laughs> um, so if you could do anything to help me on that, that would be fantastic. Do please share because sharing is caring unless of course it's an STD in which case, you know, wrap it up. Don't be gross. But that is it. That is the end of the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.